The 1990 Plainfield tornado was a devastating disaster that was rated at the top of the Fujita scale, F5. Hi, I'm Chris May, writer, producer, and host of This Day in Weather History, now in its second year from the Weather Network in Canada. This tornado occurred on the afternoon of Tuesday, August 28, 1990, but it was late, very late in the season. It is actually only the second F5 tornado ever recorded in August in the United States. And it happened this day in weather history. The U.S. tornado season does not have any hard and fast start and end date, but they normally peak during the months of March through June. As I've mentioned before, the United States receives more than 1,200 tornadoes annually, but they are known most for violent tornadoes, those rated EF4 or EF5 on the enhanced Vegeta scale. And they occur more often in the United States than in any other country on Earth. But again, normally between the months of March through June. It was the first ever rated greater than F3 in August in the state of Illinois, and the only F5 tornado to strike the Chicago area. The violent tornado killed 29 people and injured an additional 353. The Plainfield tornado was part of a small outbreak that produced several tornadoes in the northern U.S. and in Canada. The tornado moved from the northwest to the southeast. Now, this is a typical storm track in late summer, but tornadoes are not as common at that time of year, especially not a powerful F5 event. That day was above seasonal for heat and humidity, but that did not necessarily forecast a severe thunderstorm outbreak. And that is why this ensuing weather event was as damaging and as deadly as it was. The surprise factor. There was a powerful thunderstorm in progress with low cloud bases, and its early stages were masked by the preceding downburst. Because of the heavy rainfall and wind associated with the accompanying storm, the tornado was shrouded by low cloud and rain, making it difficult to see. As a result, no known photographs or videos of this tornado even exist. But those who lived it tell of how abrupt and complete the devastation was. And this storm was on the move. But because of how fast it came, saw, and conquered, and with this also predating capable cell phone technology, people were unable to communicate the damage to others until it was too late. It was determined that this tornado did indeed form from a supercell thunderstorm, and as it continued to move to the southeast, the supercell spawned a tornado that touched down near Oswego and Kendall County, eventually and rapidly strengthening into a violent tornado. It then traveled southeast into Wheatland Township, Will County, near the Wheatland Plain subdivision, northwest of Plainfield. Along the way, some cars were picked up and carried considerable distances through the air. It was determined that the tornado reached its peak strength in this area, and the F5 rating was based on the extreme ground scoring that occurred. The tornado struck Plainfield, Illinois around 3.28 p.m., and one of its first hits was around 3.30 when the tornado directly struck the Plainfield High School, killing three people, including a science teacher and two maintenance workers. Now remember, this is the U.S. It's fall football season, so training camps were underway, and the Plainfield squad had been out practicing when they ran into the high school to take shelter a few minutes before the storm hit. They were not the only intramural athletes in action at the time. As soon as the emergency alarm was pulled in the principal's office, the school's volleyball players rushed out of the gymnasium and into the nearest hallway to take shelter. Someone in that melee later reported that, just like out of a Hollywood action thriller, as soon as the last player came through that door, a coach quickly closed it, separating the gym from the hallway. And then that door was immediately ripped off by the force of the tornado. The gymnasium itself then totally collapsed in on itself into a pile of rubble. The volleyball team luckily was in the same hallway as the football team and once the tornado had passed, it was discovered then, miraculously, that was the only hallway left standing in the building. The tornado then went on to demolish the Plainfield School District Administration Building, killing one person. 55 homes were destroyed in Plainfield alone, a few of which were swept away in the tornado's wind field. 
In the months following, the National Weather Service was heavily criticized for providing no warning of the approaching tornado. Still today, many meteorologists refer to what's termed the Plainfield Syndrome. That's the idea that it's better to issue too many warnings and be wrong than to miss one critical warning, as was the case for the Plainfield Tornado on August 28, 1990. This day in weather history. Tomorrow is August 29th, and this is the day where we get back to Hurricane Katrina. The hurricane was only part of the story. It is a storm that still resonates today in that state and especially in the city of New Orleans. Tomorrow is part two of A Hurricane Called Katrina. On this day in weather history, with me, your host, Chris May.